Traders, how are you with Marcello? Today we're doing the recap of what happened in the markets last week, and it does look like that the banking crisis is going to continue. We now have the eighth largest bank in Europe, the largest in Germany, showing some signs of not necessarily failure, but some questions are starting to arise. And we have situations as well with our food supply. Now that California is getting those atmospheric, atmospheric storms. Let's go ahead and get started. The biggest news of the week was the continuation of the situation with the banking sector crisis. And we did have kind of... Uh, a resolution, let's call it, a temporary resolution. Obviously, we had the the regional banks in the United States were saved. The you know the government came in and said, yeah, you know we're gonna backstop everything. Basically, Credit Suisse, which was the seventeenth largest bank in Europe, was saved by the central bank in Switzerland as well. UBS, which is a bank larger than Credit Suisse in Switzerland, went ahead and bought their assets for for pennies on the dollar. But now we have another situation where there's some signs that Deutsche Bank, which is the largest bank in Germany, Germany being the fourth largest economy in the world and the largest economy in Europe is now showing signs of problems. And I'll give you the details of that in just a moment. Very quietly this week, the Fed raised rates by just 25 basis points or 0.25%. Essentially, a lot of investors remain cautious. There was some good economic news, so it looks like the economy right now is kind of being very resilient outside of this huge banking situation. But Fed Chairman Powell did say that they're going to have to wait and see how badly the turmoil is due to the banking situation to see if they're going to actually continue raising interest rates anymore this year. The rate at which the central bank this year or this kind of this session, let's say, or this time that they've been raising rates is the fastest that they've raised rates in the history of the central banks. Remember that the central bank is the one that we have now is the third central bank in the United States, not the first or the second. And the first and the second actually went bankrupt. And I think we're walking into the bankruptcy of the third one now. Overall, for the week, markets were mostly positive in the United States. Canada was positive as well. Overall, in the rest of the world, the markets were mostly positive. The negatives were, you know, under 0.10, 0.5%. In Bitcoin and crypto news, overall for the week, because of this banking crisis that we've had, a lot of people are walking into, quote unquote, safe havens. So Bitcoin for the month has gone up 21%. This week as well, it went up quite a bit as well. The Coinbase, which is the largest crypto exchange in the United States, got a what's called a Wells Notice from the SEC, which is essentially a preliminary determination to recommend action against the exchange. This is kind of continuing to see the, the government of the U.S. go to war against Bitcoin and cryptos. Remember that Signature Bank, which was closed in New York and Silvergate, were two of the major proponents or major banks that were involved in crypto in the U.S. On the news... Coinbase went down over 8% on Wednesday, over 14% on Thursday. There's another bank in Germany called DWP or Deutsche Wertpapierbank. Bank. I know I killed it, but basically DWP Bank, they announced that they're going to launch a new platform called WP Next, where they're going to have over 1,200 affiliated banks give access to their customers, retail customers, meaning people with lower capital access to be able to trade crypto. So there is some good news, positive news in the crypto space outside of the kind of the war that the government in the U.S. is launching against them. Binance, which is the largest crypto exchange in the world, suspended trading for about two hours on Friday. So advanced that they had a bug, quote unquote, related to trailing stops. On the news, Bitcoin went down about 700 bucks, but overall for the week, it was positive. Commodities in the Problems with our food supply space. The world's largest olive producer in Spain is likely going to have the output this year due to drought and, and excessive heat. So they're going to produce half as much. The second largest producer, which is Greece, or excuse me, the second largest producer, which is Italy, the fourth largest producer in Portugal are also decreasing their production, 
which means that this coming year we're going to have 10% less olive oil available than the previous year, which is 2022. Greece, which is the second largest producer, is going to increase production, but they're not going to be able to cover the drop in Spain, Italy, and Portugal, which are the largest producer, the second and the fourth, respectively. California, I don't know if you guys have seen... You know, I've heard most of you guys in the comments don't really follow the news and you guys like to watch what I do because I just kind of give you the facts with no political nonsense and a lot of stuff that they don't share on the mainstream news. So I don't know if you guys have seen, but in California, they're they're going through some. I mean, if if, if anybody was telling you to get out of California now, now is when the powers that be is showing you you need to leave because they're going through some stuff. They have gone through another atmospheric river. So they went from the record drought to literally just problems with snow and, and water and all kinds of things. This has caused billions of dollars in food losses. Now, the reason why this is significant is because California is a major producer of food. They produce half of the world's, half of America, the United States vegetables, and three-fourths of the country's fruits and nuts. Now, that's a big problem because they're also a major exporter as well. So even though the price of food has been going down recently... When this kind of catches up to production, food prices are probably going to go back up because of that. Now, this is the second snowiest winter in California on record and probably much more to come as well, which is not a good thing. The atmospheric river left 92,000 people and businesses without electricity, 14,000 people under evacuation orders and another 48,000 with, with an order from California to be ready to leave due to the situation that they're that they're having there. India is said to eclipse to China as the most important driver of global growth. The population in India has already surpassed that of China. China, if you didn't know, is having a really big problem with their population. They had a one-child policy, so now people basically aren't having kids and their population is collapsing. Whereas India isn't, let's say, modernizing at, at, at the rate that China did. China is already exploding kind of the renewable energy phenomenon and the EVs and everything in addition to the Western world. But China, or excuse me, India is kind of lagging in that regard. So they're soon expected to become the biggest importer of oil in the world. In addition to a major economy that's going to consume fossil fuels while that kind of revolution of the electrified and the EVs and the solar panels and everything and the renewables catches up. U.S. crude for the week went up 3.77%. Brent went up almost 3%. And gold and silver, just like Bitcoin, which are kind of refuge or, you know, safe haven, quote unquote, places to invest their money. Gold went up to a 12-month high to 2014 and 90 cents, pulled back to 1979. It went up 0.56% for the week. While silver went up to a six-week high and then pulled back, closed at 23.58, and it went up 2.68%. Financial and banking news, the global debt-to-GDP ratio, debt-to-GDP meaning the size of the economy in the world, is 360%. I've talked about it here a lot before where when a country gets to 100% debt-to-GDP, meaning that their debt is equal to the size of their economy, right? Debt-to-GDP at 100% they start having less bang for their buck in addition to a lot more financial problems. After the 2008 financial crisis, countries and governments around the world basically just printed free money, which is part of the reason why we're seeing the inflation situation now. But now every dollar of debt that they try to emit to invest in the economy, we don't get back a dollar in growth in the economy. It starts to go down quite a bit. So they put in a dollar, we only get 90 cents. And as the debt continues to grow, we get 60 cents and 50 cents, et cetera, et cetera. That's a big problem because now we're probably going to have, uh, I would say maybe a decade or so, maybe even more of, of kind of stagnation overall. So now would be a good time to get your side hustle going because we're probably going to see a lot more layoffs in the economy now that AI is even taking over a lot of jobs as well. The Central Bank of Indonesia is going to send transition away from Visa and MasterCard. And other news of the collapse of the dollar, you can see that even the BRICS nations are starting to emit world loans at a cheaper interest rate than the IMF, which is the International Monetary Fund. They're going to introduce a new payment system, which is going to be basically theirs. UBS takes over Credit Suisse, as I mentioned in the beginning. They bought their debt for pennies on the dollar. And Biden also, according to reports, is in touch with Warren Buffett on the banking crisis. Warren Buffett seems, some, seems like such a wholesome you know, down to earth guys, but he's a shark.
because he made billions of dollars during the 2008 crisis. One of the things that I think you should know about the regional bank crisis and the crisis that we're having with the banks right now in the United States is that, take, listen to these numbers very closely, small and medium banks account for 50% of the U.S. commercial and industrial lending, 60% of the res residential real estate lending, 80% of the commercial real estate lending, and 45% of the consumer lending, so 60 residential, 80 commercial and 45 consumer lending is coming from small and medium banks. Now we're having a situation because of the fear that's in the market that a lot of people are pulling their money out of these smaller banks and putting them into the big boys like Chase, Bank of America, etc. So what's going to happen to these this loan situation and the ease the e easiness what's the right word in English the the ease of being able to take out loans in these smaller banks compared to the bigger banks. So that could be a crisis that we're walking into as well. First Republic Bank shares halted several times on volatility with JP Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon leading discussions on how to how to stabilize the bank. They had a lot of the big banks kind of investing in First Republic to be able to go and stabilize it. Signature Bank fell almost 23% on Monday alone now that they announced that the FDIC is going to sell most of the deposits to a bank called Flagstar Bank. It's about 39 billion dollars worth of deposits and assets. Germany's largest bank, Deutsche Bank, tumbled on Friday after the cost of insuring the bank's debt risk went up almost to a default level, meaning that the banks pay to be able to insure themselves against default. So the the rate at which the insurance literally went parabolic, meaning that there's probably going to be a problem now with the largest bank in Germany. Remember that Germany is the largest bank in in largest economy, excuse me, in Europe and the fourth largest overall in the world. Deutsche shares are down 20% this month. And now a lot of people are worrying because they've lost $3 billion in market value in just a week. So it looks like this isn't over just yet. Fitch ratings cut Argentina's foreign currency rating to from C to CCC minus, basically meaning that a default risk is imminent. If you guys didn't know, Argentina literally goes through a banking and financial collapse every 10 years, it seems. That's what they get for voting for socialists for the last 70 years. And U.S. banks now are borrowing about $117 billion every night to be able to shore up their cash reserves. So you can see that this banking situation is not over yet. Conspiracy Marcello says, I think that they're doing this on purpose to be able to institute the new government coin, right? And then then that, that's when the party starts because you won't be able to travel. You won't be able to buy stuff because you reached your climate quota and all this stuff. Political news. Chinese President Xi visited Putin in Russia for the first time after the invasion of Ukraine. One of the interesting things that they were caught saying on camera was that there are more changes happening now than in the last hundred years. And both Putin and Xi are leading this change. More signs of the collapse of the dollar and U.S. homogeny. Millions of people are continuing to protest in France over the pension reform. Macron, which is the president Macron, which is the president of France, survived the no confidence vote by just seven or eight votes. In economic news, the number of Americans filing for new unemployment benefits edged down this week by about a thousand, which means that the economy is becoming or is, I should say, really resilient based on the banking crisis. In corporate news, shares of GameStop surged 35%. So the meme stock is back. They posted their first profit in two years. Just to give you an idea of that, the net profits they had were $48 million. And last year they lost $147.5 million. Block shares collapsed 14%. Block, if you didn't know, was the company behind Square. I don't know if you guys go to a cafe and they flip the, you know, the little monitor thing where they want you to leave a tip for just ordering a coffee now. And Cash App also they own. Hindenburg Research, if you guys remember, those were the ones that launched a report on the Adani Group, which is one of the biggest corporations in India. Well, they're saying that they're facilitating fraud in addition to calling their compliance system the Wild West approach. So it looks like Jack Dorsey, which was the previous CEO of Twitter, is probably going to have some problems on his hand now. Netflix went up by over 9% after they reported strong subscriber growth for its advertising subs subs advertiser subs <laughs> advertising subs subsidized. There we go. Streaming video service and Amazon also announced another 9,000 job layoffs. 
They've now laid off 27,000 positions or about 9% of their workforce. In trade news, Chinese car companies are sweeping in and taking over the market in Russia as our quote-unquote sanctions don't allow our Western companies to go in and do business in certain places. China, which doesn't give a crap about the sanctions, excuse my French, they're going in and taking in taking over the market. A lot of Russians obviously were hesitant to buy those Chinese cars because they probably only last for a year. But now the new car sales are about 40% from Chinese companies compared to the, the Western ones. And in unusual facts this week, uh, Japan identified a new species of orchids that have been growing unexpectedly in parks, gardens, and balconies around the country. The flower has a pink and white bloom so delicate that they look like they were spun from glass. And the flower resembles a close relative to the common orchid species in Japan. That's the news for this week, guys. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Don't forget to move your money to one of the big banks so you don't lose it all. And remember, the preppers were right.